Good afternoon. Can you hear me? So it, it, it's a pleasure to introduce uh, the second speaker, the second plenary speaker, uh, Lucia Caporazzo. Let me say a few words about Lucia. <coughs> uh, she's, of course, a fantastic algebraic geometer. She has published in very important journals, like Journal of the American Mathematics Society, Inventiones, American Journal, Duke Mathematical Journal, and so on and so forth. And she has also had a collaborator of very high level, like Joe Harris, Barry Major, Cernesi Cornalba, Eduardo Stevens, and many others. And she was a Sloan Foundation doctor and postdoctoral fellow uh, when she was doing her PhD. And she's now editor of several good journals. One of them is Transaction of American Mathematics Society, Memoirs of the American Mathematics Society, Composition, and many others. And she, she also finds time to do some administrative job. She's now the head of the math and physics department at Rome 3. And of course, she's a member of many, she has been and still a member of many committees in the European community, uh, mathematics community. Uh, she has many interests, and, but uh, I thought, of, thought that the, the recent themes that she's working on is uh, tropical geometry and graphs. <laughs> okay, yes. Lucia. Thank you. Is it on? Thank you for the introduction. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. Let me thank the organizers. It's great to be back to this uh, Instituto Maravilloso in this Cidade Maravillosa. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to think that Roma, the city I come from, was the most beautiful city on the planet. But then 15 years ago, on my first visit here, I had to change my mind. So I'm glad, very glad to be back. Um, I'm using the blackboard. Uh, I, I'm aware I'm the first plenary speaker to do that. The way I decided to structure the talk makes it preferable because I want things to remain until the end. So this is the main reason. But there's also another reason, you know, it's less and less you know, common to have these nice blackboards when you give lectures. This is, I, I lectured in this very room on this very blackboard, and this is a great blackboard. Before you get rid of that, I want to use it. So, <laughs> so let me begin. So I wrote the title, and I want to follow uh, Carlangelo Liverani's suggestion, which, which I heard twice, and I decided it's a great one. The first thing you have to do when you give a talk is explain the words of the title. In this case, it's very, it, it works out well, as I hope you, you will agree with me. So I will begin with the word moduli. The word moduli, it, it's actually a German word. Moduli is due to Riemann. Moduli theory in algebraic geometry is a fundamental part. It studies um, sets of isomorphism classes of geometric objects with certain discrete invariants. And it's a special feature of algebraic geometry that these sets have a structure of algebraic variety themselves. And their structure, this structure of algebraic variety is a natural one in the sense that it retains some of the properties of the objects it parameterizes. Now this is a crucial fact which you, you have to sort of appreciate. It's very important. Now uh, young algebraic geometers don't even think about it. They take it for granted. But in the 60s when these, the, 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 this fact was <coughs> came to light thanks to the work of Grothendieck, Mumford, and before that Hilbert, this was a big, a big discovery. So the first moduli space and the main moduli space I want to talk about here is the moduli space MG of smooth curves of genus G. So this as a set is the set of isomorphism classes of smooth curves of genus G. So let me just write it out. The moduli space of smooth curves of genus G. Now, algebraic geometers work over any field, but in this audience I know that there are many non-algebraic geometers, so if our base field is the field of complex numbers, an algebraic curve, a smooth algebraic curve of genus G is just a Riemann surface. For example, 
this is a topological surface of genus 2, you put a complex structure on it and you have a smooth curve of genus G. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Now, this space is an algebraic variety. It has some properties that's been studied. So here we are, say, in the early 60s, from the early 60s on. It was constructed around that time. It is an irreducible connected variety. It has dimension to simplify matters. I will assume the genus to be at least two just to simplify the, 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 the description, but this is completely irrelevant. <laughs> it has dimension 3G minus 3, and this, is, this was known to Riemann already. So Riemann already was studying the number of parameters you need to specify a complex structure on a topological surface of given genus. And he knew that, at least over the complex numbers, that number is 3G minus 3. And that holds over any, com over any algebraically closed field. As I said, uh, properties of this guy, which is an algebraic variety, reflect properties of the varieties it parameterizes. One property, which is, more, which is basically a, a drawback of it, let me write it this way. This is a fault. It is not compact. Now, um, algebraic geometers and geometers in general are interested in these moduli spaces because they want to apply them. Now, working with a non-compact space is, is, very, is a waste of time. Uh, it's the, 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 the one, there are many metaphors I've heard. One of them is working with, a, for an algebraic geometer, working with a non-compact moduli space is like a chemist working with uh, flasks and, te and test tubes with holes in it. It's completely useless. So one of the main points in, alg in algebraic geometry is when you have a moduli space, and most moduli spaces are not compact, most of them, to study a good compactification of them. And this will be a, a, a theme that will recur continuously today. Before I go to explain what tropical means, I want to introduce another moduli space. It's important that I, I want to really convey the, the fact that there are many, many, many moduli spaces that have been studied at length, not just for curves. Okay, for example, an important class of algebraic varieties other than curves is the class of abelian varieties. Now, abelian varieties are very interesting because they're, the definition of an abelian variety is a very simple one. It's just an algebraic variety, which is projective, and which is a group, such that the, the group laws of the variety are also are algebraic, are, are given by algebraic morphism. So, algebraic, uh, sorry, abelian varieties are a very, very important set of abelian varieties, and they have a moduli space, which I will put here. It's denoted by AG. This is the moduli space of abelian varieties of dimension G that, oh, that has also been constructed. Abelian varieties of dimension G. This is also not compact. Its compactification, just like the compactification of MG, of, of MG, will be, I will say a few words about it later. The reason why I put that on the board is that there is a very, very important connection between these two spaces. So a classical theorem that goes well, be, well before moduli theory on the, on the, about curves, about Riemann surfaces and then algebraic curves, is the fact that to every curve, you can associate an abelian variety, which is called the Jacobian. And the Jacobian determines it uniquely. This is called the Torelli theorem. It's very famous. It goes, it goes back to, I think, 1913 or something like that. So it's an old theorem. And why is that so important? Well, because you have a geometric object of which you, of which you understand very little, because uh, these things are complicated. You put it inside a group. And uh, when you put it inside a group, the, you have several properties. One of them is that when you're, uh, sorry, I forgot to mention that a curve is in, inside its Jacobian. It sits inside its Jacobian and it, it spans it as a group. So it really gives you a lot, this, this embedding, this fact that you can put the curve in a Jacobian in a canonical way gives you lots of information on the curve. So this is very important. And the fact that the abelian variety, the Jacobian, determines the curve is a very powerful instrument. In modern terms, 
as I said, the structures of these two are natural. There is a map which is injective because I said that every curve, so the map maps a curve to its Jacobian. It is injective because of the theorem that I just said, Torelli theorem. And it is not just a map. It is a morphism of algebraic varieties with good properties, okay? So this is saying that the structure of these has some really deep, deep meaning. Let me call this thing tau. All right, now that I told you, I hope I convinced you that moduli theory is important despite, I mean, the word is not so friendly, I think, but still, it's, it's really important. Now, what about tropica? This is easier because tropica here means just Brazilian. So it's quite appropriate, huh? But I, I, you know, believe me, I didn't do that on purpose. In fact, my last paper has basically the same title of this talk, and it was before I accepted this invitation. So it just came out like that. Brazilian means, so in this, what this came up yesterday in the lecture of Ha, he mentioned that, I would repeat that. Um, uh, tropical geometry was born in this country, in the University of Sao Paulo, Sao Paulo, in the something around the late 70s, thanks to the, the professor Simon, who, who was a professor there, and it, it, it came, again, this is, this, is very this is very close to the spirit of the previous lecture, uh, it came from applied mathematics. Tropical geometry was born from applied mathematics, and then was discovered later, let's say around the 90s, maybe a little earlier, but the first really interesting results came out in the 90s. It was, sorry, it was connected to algebraic geometry. <coughs> so it's, it's a kind of geometry that, that bears an enormous, it's, 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 its foundations are really combinatorial, algebra combinatorial, and then uh, when uh, uh, algebraic geometers, including myself, looked at it, saw that it had fantastic applications in modular theory, which is precisely what I'm discussing now. All right, so um, let's be simple, and let's say what a tropical curve is. So a tropical curve for us will be, sorry, my handwriting is bad, tropical curve. Uh, it's a, it's a, an abstract tropical curve, is just a, denoted by capital gamma, will be a graph with some extra properties. So let me, let me say that because this is not some, it's, it's easy, it's easy to, to define and not something people are used to see. So we have a graph, G, just a usual graph with vertices and edges finitely many vertices, finitely many edges, everything is allowed, loops and so on. It has a length on the edges. L is a length function on the edges, so every, every edge has a length, which is a real number. Okay? Okay, so it's a quite simple object. So for example, let's draw one. I'm just drawing, uh, just, there's nothing special about this example. It's just a graph with two vertices, three edges, and every edge has a certain length, L1, L2, L3, all right? Now, um, of course, graphs are very simple objects. Uh, they appear everywhere in mathematics, and when you, when you so in some sense, so they certainly are a, a discrete mathematical objects. When you make them into a tropical curve like that, they, they're not, no longer discrete, they can move. You can, you can vary the length of the graphs and interesting things happen. For example, suppose we have the length L1 go to zero. Let L1 goes to zero, the graph changes, right? We get, this edge gets contracted. Let us fix the other two lengths, just for the sake of simplicity, and we have a new graph that looks like that. All right, good. Now let's let L2 go to zero. If L2 goes to zero, we have this. 
graph, okay? A vertex and a loop. Now, as an algebraic geometry looking at this, I immediately see a problem and I want to explain what the problem is. See, there is an invariant of graphs that everybody knows, which is the first Betty number, okay? This is also called the genus of the graph. So the genus of a tropical curve, the genus of gamma, is defined as the first Betty number of the graph. In this, in these, in this sec, in, so the genus of this is two. You, you see that easily. The genus of this is also two. The genus of this is one. Now this is not good, not at all. You know, algebraic geometers have learned, you know, when they are, when they are in, in, in their cradle that whenever you have a family, the genus has to stay constant. What that, so the, the, what that tells us is that our definition of tropical curve is not quite, quite what we want. And in fact, that's, that's what we, we shall do now. We shall add a piece of structure, which is why I left, wisely left a little bit of space there. We can add, we can decide that our vertices have weights in such a way that when we contract a loop, the limit, the limit remembers that I'm contracting a loop. So let me do that. We add, so without adding the W, the definition I had was the classical definition coming from tropical geometry due to Mikalkin, Zharkov, and, and the old school. I'm talking about very recent mathematics, so this is all uh, 1990s. And, and uh, so ca calling it old school is funny, but anyways. So we add a piece of structure to that, which is just a weight function on the vertices. And in that case, suppose we, we start with a tropical curve where the weights of the vertices are all zero. When we contract a loop, we keep, that, keep track of that by having the weight increase. Of course, this means that we also have to change the genus. The genus is not only equal to the first Betty number, but we have to add the contributions of the weight. So this is the definition of an abstract tropical curve. And now I want to talk about moduli spaces of tropical curves. Okay, as I said, we are very, very we are, an algebraic geometer, when he sees a new object, he has to somehow understand how the isomorphism classes of these objects vary, if they form a space, how, what kind of space, and so on and so forth. So when algebraic geometers saw the definition of a tropical curve, they just decided, okay, let's look at the moduli space. And it turns out to be something very easy, I mean, very easy. Not so hard compared to how hard it has been to construct these guys, but still something that's worth explaining. So let me do that. So here we are more, in more recent time. Um, one of the drawbacks of using the blackboard is that I, uh, and of having only 45 minutes is that I won't give many, as many credits as I should. But this is an overview. So there will be, if I had to mention all, every, every single person who, who contributed to the results I'm describing, it would take basically the half an hour. So I apologize for that, but there's only so much you can do in a talk. There are many, this is, this is, I'm summarizing results where many people, to which many people contributed. Some in this room, okay? Right, so uh, what about the moduli space of tropical curves? Now there is a very obvious notion of isomorphism between tropical curves. You take the two graphs. They are isomorphic if they as, are isomorphic as graphs and the isomorphism preserves, preserves the lens, okay? That's not quite enough. In tropical geometry, it turns out that, this, that you need something stronger, which I will not define. There is an equivalent, there is a relation of, uh, there is an equivalence relation on tropical curves, which from a topological point of view is very natural. I mean, I could explain it, but it will take time and it won't, it won't really add much to the, to the, to the, to the, to the talk. But the, the important thing is that every, every equivalence class of tropical curves under this equivalence relation that I have not defined, there is a unique representative which is stable in the following sense. So we say that a tropical curve is stable if its dr uh, underlying dra graph is stable. So we say that GW, this is, a, is stable 
if vertices of weight zero are bound to have valency, valency, at least three. Valency of V, at least three. If you think about this, the valence is the number of half edges. Yes, the number of, so, oh, I, I erased the picture. I stupidly erased the picture, but all the graphs I had in the previous pictures are stable. The valence is the number of half edges meeting in a vertex, okay? Also called degree. Okay, now the point, if you think about it, it's very easy to show that if you, if you denote by SG, which I will need for later, for later reasons, the, the set of all stable graphs of genes G, this set is finite. And this is, this is easy. It's easy, especially if you've seen the definition for the first time, you can check. It's actually a nice exercise. And it's not only finite, it's also closed under the generations. That is, if you contract edges, you still get a stable graph, okay? Provided that you, 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 your, your edge contractions are defined so as to take into account the phenomenon of loop contractions, which is very important, okay? All right, so now what about the moduli space of stable curves? Uh, sorry, sorry, I take it back. What about the moduli space of tropical curves? The moduli space of tropical curve was constructed, uh, the, first, uh, the first was constructed by B. Kalkin, then later on by, um, two by a triple of mathematicians, two Italian and one Portuguese, almost, uh, Branetti, Melo, and Viviani, and then I also contributed to the subject, but uh, this is not something, um, so <laughs> I, just, I don't want to say that it's easy but I do want to say that the construction is very natural, okay? So the moduli space of tropical curves, I will denote it by mg trop, okay? So this is the moduli space of tropical curves of genus G. Again, this space parameterizes equivalence classes of tropical curves, not isomorphism classes. So two isomorphic tropical curves are equivalent, but you can have, a, 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 so the classes are actually bigger. This, as I said before, is partitioned into a union of strata, one for every stable graph, okay? And I will write that for later reasons. So I will denote by M trop G W, this is just a set of uh, equivalence classes of tropical curves whose underlying graph, so the discrete piece, the discrete piece hmm, is given and it's a stable graph. I hope you can read here, all right? Okay, now what, what kind of space is this? This is a topological space. It is not a tropical variety. Okay, it is not a tropical variety. It's too nasty to be a tropical variety, but still, it is nice and to, um, to explain, to give you a flavor of, of what it looks like, it's given as follows. You take a union, a disjoint union, of closed real cones. Finitely many of them, so here is a real cone greater or equal than zero, take the real numbers, greater or equal than positive, uh, non-negative real numbers. How many copies of this? You take a cone for every stable graph. And what is the dimension of the cone? If I gave you five minutes to guess what the dimension of the cone should be, I'm sure you would know. But I won't give you five minutes. The dimension is just the number of parameters, that is the number of lengths. You have a, a graph, it has a certain number of edges. For every edge, you have a length. And so, the cardinality of the set of edges of the graph, okay? You, then you have a surjection. This is the nasty part. You have to understand how this map is given, but uh, it's not as, not as far from being a quotient. So there are lots of groups acting this map as finite fibers, but it's still too nasty and that's not a tropical variety, okay?
okay? But it's a topological space. It turns out to be of dimension 3G minus 3, just like the moduli space of curves, of algebraic curves. It is not compact, again. But in this case, it's easy. It's very, now I can say that it's very easy because I did that. <laughs> it's very easy to compactify it. And, I, and when I did it, I had no idea that, uh, that uh, my construction would, <laughs> would be so useful. I really have to say that. I will explain, and so we need to compactify that. The reason why this is not compact is clear, right? You can have le edge lengths go to infinity, and of course, you're not going to get something compact. It's quite clear. So how do we compactify it? Well, we, why not allow the length to be equal to infinity? So we extend our definition of tropical curve to what we call extended tropical curves, simply by permitting the length to be equal to plus infinity. Then we somehow play with the Alexander of one point compactification, and we get a compact space which here, of course, we need, I need to put infinity. What did I do? Yes. So all of this to say that there is a very simple way of compactifying the moduli space of tropical curves, which is called the moduli space of extended tropical curves. We put bars everywhere whenever we need to remind ourselves that we are allowing infinite lengths. The combinatorics does not change. And once you do that, this topological space is house that has all the separa separa separation properties you want. So in fact, it's a normal topological space. OK. Now, all of this has to be connected to the moduli space, to, the, to, the, to, the, um, to, to, to algebraic curves. So first of all, I will explain what the local connection is. The local connection is the following. So now the, qu the point is I want to say how, I want to explain how this guy helps us to understand how to compactify this guy. Okay? As I said, MG is not compact. We know how to compactify today. We knew that before, before uh, tropical geometry was discovered. But the combinatorics of the moduli space of the, of, the, of, the compactification, of the compactification is extremely complicated. Some sort of, sort of a mystery in also in its generalizations. So it, there was a chaos, basically, which is no longer a chaos, at least in my point of view now. Um, so let's, let's see how to relate tropical curves to smooth curves. And this goes back to the question of non-compactness. So non-compactness means, what does it mean? It means that if you have a family of smooth curves, that it's very easy that that family will specialize to a singular curve and that, 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 that critical fiber will not be removed. There's no way you can do that. This is a very, very general phenomenon in all moduli spaces, as I, as I have already said. So in the 60s, we had a beautiful theorem by the linear Mumford called the stable reduction theorem. By the linear Mumford, which tells us the following thing. So we have a local family. Take a local family. So a local, you can think a local family is just a family parameterized by a one-dimensional base. You can think of it as a disk in the complex numbers, if you like complex numbers. So let me call the base delta. The total space, I would call it C. So this is just a family of curves. This is my schematic representation of my base. So it's a disk with a marked point, the origin. The genetic fiber is smooth. And here you have something very, very nasty, unspeakably nasty. You don't know what to do with it. Well, the theorem tells us that if you take, if you take a, a root, so if you take a covering of delta, something of type z goes to z to the d, d has to be determined, then you pull back the family to the disk, you have a disk again, you can fill in the family with a unique, so-called, again, the same word as before, stable limit, which is just a new fiber, so you basically modify nothing but the special fiber, 
And the special fiber, let me draw it in a way, somehow like that. And what is a stable curve? That's a very, so the idea of the linear Mumford is, a, is a so simple that when you, if I still, well, anyways, they had such a simple idea to ha on how to compactify this modulate space that it's amazing that the, it, it opened up highways of mathematics after that, but it's a really simple idea. So you want to compactify the modulate space of smooth curves. What do you do? Well, you add curves with the simplest possible type of singularities, that is nodes, two branches crossing transversally, and add, uh, um, so what is a stable curve? Let me write it down. Stable curves. are curves with, at most, nodes as singularities. So for non-algebraic geometers, nodes are the simplest type of singularities you can have, okay? So the curve can have some, some isolated singularities. And since uh, curves of genus at least two have finitely many automorphisms, and that's one of, that's, that's a key property to have a nice moduli space, we want that property to be preserved. So finite automorphism group. Let me not get technical on that, but this is what stable curves are, okay? So the stable limit is a stable curve, okay? That's, that's what the stable reduction theorem tells you. Tells you that if you base change, if you up to, up, to, up to taking a root of the base, you can fill in the family with a stable curve, okay? Now stable curves, let me, let me look at this fi fiber that I wrote. So the way I wrote it, I have two components. Let's call C1 and C2 the two components. Stable, stable curves, let me write this way, the set of all stable curves, have a dual graph. Every, to every stable curve, you can associate a graph. Same guys we mentioned before. How, I will not give you the definition, but it's, I will give you this example. In this example, the graph is as follows. The edges, uh, sorry, the vertices of the graph are the components of the curves. So C1 and C2 are our two vertices. My curve has two components, so I have two vertices. I drew three nodes, one, two, and three. So my curve will have three edges, and the edges will correspond to the components meeting at those nodes. So C1 and C2 meet at two points, so I have two edges. C2 has an extra node of its own, so we have a loop here. And then the weights, the weights, I need the weights, are just the genera of the various components. So the genus of C1 and the genus of C2. Okay, so this is to say that to every stable curve, you can associate its dual graph. And actually, this is a surjection. Okay, and to every graph, you have a family of stable curves associated. All right, this was known before uh, tropical geometry, but you can see, so at the time, we knew this. We knew that there are only finitely many combinatorial types of limits a uh, family of smooth curves can have, but still, you know, uh, stable graphs are complicated objects. There are many of them, <laughs> even if there are finitely many of them, okay? Now, with tropical geometry, so you see, this is a graph. There is no metric. There is no length. Now, this local correspondence that, I'm, that I have, that I had to raise this because I need this board, okay? This, this tropical curves, now, now okay, I'm sorry, I was, I was getting ahead of myself. So with this um, game, I want to show you that to every family, uh, to every local family of, stop, of stable curves that, that corresponds a well-defined tropical curve, okay? So this is, this is, more recent advances. So let's consider the family, of the, all families, all of them, local families of stable curves. Now, this is really too, too, way too loose. Let me just for once say over a certain field. Now, capital K for the experts is just I will say in a moment what it is, but it is a field. Indeed, this algebraic geometers, this set is often denoted by this symbol, okay? This denotes the set of stable curves of genus G 
over a field K, which is here uh, the evaluation field complete with respect to evaluation. If you don't like that, think of this as all, look, all families of, uh, of stable curves over the unit disk. It's just fine. And now we have the moduli space of tropical curves. And we need a bar here, otherwise this will not work. And we have a map which is called TROP K, which to a family associates a tropical curve where this is my tropical curve. GW will be the dual graph of the stable limit. And this is not so, such a big deal, really. But what's a big deal is that we can also define a length here. And the length, let me just say that, so what is L? So L is a length function on the edges. It records the local geometry of the total space near every one of the nodes, okay? And this can be done in a pre precise way, in a rigorous way. So this tropical curve <laughs> tells you the combinatorial, the combinatorial structure of the special fiber and the discrete invariance, not so discrete, and the invariance of the total space. Okay, so this is the local correspondence. In the last, wow, six, I think, minutes, I will explain how to make this global. Okay, so we have a local correspondence that to every family, to every local family of stable curves associates a tropical curve, and this map is actually surjective, by the way. This is not easy to prove, but it is surjective. Actually, the surjectivity will come out from, from later results, okay? It's not obvious to prove it. It, it comes out from a general machine. Okay, so now I was told that I should not write here. Is that true? Do you see? No. Okay, let me mention that, so the stable reduction theorem here is suggesting that to compactify the moduli space of smooth curves, stable curves should be enough. And indeed, that's exactly what happens. So the compactification of the moduli space of smooth curves is exactly the moduli space, let, let me write it down, the moduli space of stable curves. So, okay, here, here we are a little later, so I went back. I went back in around the 80s. 70s, 80s, okay? That's a, a projective variety, reducible, it has many properties, MG is an open subset inside here, and this is exactly the set, as a set, the set of isomorphism classes of stable curves of genus G. It has a nice moduli space, okay? And those of you who went to Ha's lecture yesterday heard about tropicalization. Now, the moduli space of stable curves can be described, where is it, in a very similar way as the moduli space of tropical curves. So it has a partition which looks exactly like that. Let me write it. So it, it is a union of, of uh, sub-varieties. So each of these guys is a topological space. Each of the sub-varieties I'm writing here are actually quasi-projective varieties. I put a knowledge here to remember not to confuse it with TROP, okay? And again, the, in, in the graph is a stable graph. And these are actually more than just partitions. Uh, if you take the closures, you get some strata. It's a, it's a partially ordered set under, under inclusion. And the two post sets are the same. You just have to reverse the arrows. Okay, so th there's much more than just this. It's, a, it's an actual, the combinatorics of this is very similar to the combinatorics of that. So after having constructed the moduli space of, stable, of tropical curves, after knowing about tropical geometry, the question was, 
is, an, is the modular space of tropical curves. The tropicalization of the modular space of stable curves. I'm not writing anything because, first of all, we have to somehow understand what a tropicalization is. So let me take two minutes to, to give you a little bit of the general theory. Is mg bar trop the tropicalization of mg bar? But I want to write that in a, in a precise way, okay? So now let's, let's try to, for two minutes, to forget about moduli spaces of curves and let's take any algebraic object, variety scheme stack that depends on your taste. So that's an algebra that, of which mg bar would be a special case. We have, we have seen in the, after the, in, the, in the late 90s a way of associating, so let me write this, algebraic variety of whatever. We have seen if this variety has some good combinatorial properties for the expert, I will write, which has a toroidal structure, I don't have enough time to explain what that means nor to say anything about it, but I don't want to give you the impression that this operation can be done for any scheme. That's not true. You can do it only for certain, if, if your variety has certain properties, which mg bar almost has, then you can associate to it, to it a so-called tropicalization. Which is, I mean, the way I like to say that it's a, the combinatorial avatar of X. It retains the combinatorics of X in a very deep way, and it's, it, it, many of the, of the combinatorial properties of X can be, can be described in this term. Since, as you probably guessed, the, I, I, the answers to the question if mg drop is the, uh, uh, the tropicalization of mg bar is yes, you can think of, uh, of course, I erased the board I needed, but anyways, these have a polyhedral structure. You should think of these guys as obtained by gluing real polyhedra in a certain way. Okay, so the question is, is mg bar trop the tropicalization of mg bar? Okay? Now, uh, the question is not quite precise because mg bar, I, may I have two more minutes? It, so then I will organize, how much time do I have? Four. Oh, four minutes, then I'll be fine. Okay, and I don't see where. <laughs> um, okay, so mg bar does not have a toroidal structure. It's, uh, it's, it's uh, let me just say that I need to put a bar here, and what I need to do that, I need to consider the underlying stack. I'm saying that for the F experts. So I need to take the tropicalization of mg bar, but using its stack structure, and then everything works. So the answer is yes. But what's not about the answer is the context in which it, it is realized. So while we had, so we have on the, on the left the tropicalization, but there's another amazing construction uh, that we can do once we have an algebraic variety, which is the, its analytification. Actually, let me do it this way. To an algebraic variety, any algebraic scheme, there's no, 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 you don't need anything, just any. So this is, this is irrelevant here. You can construct, I, I, think, I hope that some people here will like this, what's called the analytification of X. Here we are. This is a deep theory that took many years to be developed by Berkovich, the Berkovich analytification. So the analytification of an algebraic scheme is a complicated object. So why, whereas the tropicalization is a simpler object, the analytification is a much more complicated object. It's, in fact, it surjects onto X. It has a map, trivial map onto X, but it's much more complicated. But it makes the, uh, the, the, the variety more complicated 
and, the, and what you gain is the possibility to, to perform some analytic, con analytic constructions on it globally, which you could not do earlier. Of course, now here, this is interesting if you are not over the complex numbers. So algebraic geometers since the 70s, and not just algebraic geometers, number theorists and representational theorists have been looking for ways of using analytic methods on algebraic varieties defined over arbitrary fields. It took a long time, and, uh, and maybe, maybe the Berkovich theory is not the final one, but certainly it has, it has had uh, amazing applications in number theory and representation theory. For us, this is quite a small application. We take, we take the analytification of a variety, and by general reasons, if the variety has a toroidal map, there is a completely general map from the analytification to the tropicalization, which is called trop. So let me put everything into a picture. Let me apply this box to the moduli space of curves. So as I said, the moduli space of tropical curves is the tropicalization of the moduli space of stable curves. And so we have a diagram which goes like that. We have the analytification of the moduli space of curves, which we can take. It's, it's a very nice space. It's, it, for the experts, this contains a lot, of, a lot of things related to enriched curves. Then we have the tropicalization map that exists in general. Sorry. And this map is exact, restricts exactly to this map because this analytification, the point of this analytification over any field, blah, blah, with whatever properties, are exactly, exactly these families plus the valuation plus technical stuff they haven't said. What I'm saying is that this is gluing together the local maps that I defined earlier. All right, now we have the forgetful map to MG bar. And I want to close with one problem, one problem that I think would be very nice to resolve, but it is completely open. So we have a tropical Torelli, we had the tropical, we, sorry, we had the Torelli map. The Torelli map exists because we have a moduli space of a billion varieties and it's compactification. So we have the, tropic, the, the Torelli map compactified, which I said is a crucial, crucial, crucial morphism in algebraic geometry. If we apply the analytification uh, construction, which is very general, we can consider the analytification of the moduli space of a billion varieties and this map, because the Berkovich theory is completely functorial. So if you have a morphism of algebraic varieties, you take the analytifications and the morphism extends. Okay, so you have this. We also have a tropical Torelli map, which I haven't said anything about because of time, but we have a tropical Torelli map. I really wanted to say that we also have a definition of tropical abelian varieties, which I'm just throwing at you right now, but they, they exist, and the tropical Torelli map. And now we don't know, you see, if, you, if I had drawn this a little better, you'd see that there's a, there's a corner missing here. See, we don't know how to construct the tropicalization of the moduli space of a billion varieties so as to complete the diagram. This is completely open, whereas Many others, I mean, the, the, our results, this, this is a theorem that I proved with uh, Abramovich and Payne uh, last year, two years ago, it appeared last year. And uh, it has been generalized to several moduli spaces that are closely related to moduli spaces of curves, but it is a complete mystery to generalize it to abelian varieties. So I really wanted to conclude with that. Thank you, I'm sorry for going over time.